I think that I was actually selected or targeted at a very early age. And I'm guessing that it probably happened starting when I was about three years old. That would have been in 1950. I think they targeted children who had a lot of potential. They wanted really bright children to experiment on. And the other common thread seems to be the, that the father was connected to the military, as mine had been. My father was a very damaged uh, veteran of World War II, and he was a pedophile, and he was very abusive. Both the American and the Canadian governments via the CIA were conducting mind control experiments on children that started in the 40s and I believe are continuing to this day. And I am a survivor of the experimentation. Something that has recently come to light in Canada are the claims by a woman named Dorothy Proctor who was an inmate in Kingston Women's Prison in the 1960s. Dorothy was subjected to LSD and sensory deprivation experiments when she was 17 years old. Canada's involvement in the development and the research of brainwashing uh, techniques to be used on on its own citizens ultimately, I would think began as early as 1937 or 1938. Jim Bronskill, again from South of News, wrote an article in late December of 97 uh, describing the correspondence between Dr. George Estabrook from Colgate College in Upper State New York and Hamilton, New York, and Superintendent Bevan, who was the head of the RCMP for Canada in 1940. Um, based on the correspondence, Bevan and Esther Brooks had had a dialogue prior to this letter being written, and Esther Brooks had been invited to d discuss creating Manchurian candidates, basically for the Canadian government in Ottawa in 1940. In their correspondence, Esther Brooks said he would simply need access to a hospital or an institution like that for a minimum of one week. And he would use hypnosis and other techniques to create dissociated personalities, multiple personalities, to create what became what became to be known as Manchurian candidates. But as far as I understand it, it came from the notion of people coming back from the Korean War, mm -hmm. that uh, they had uh, they were totally different people and a totally different set of attitudes and things like this. And they were, uh, God help us, they were anti-American, if you can possibly, uh, possibly anybody um, being that way. And the question is, what were they doing to, uh, to their soldiers? Yeah, they had the faintest idea of what they were doing. And so they thought maybe this, uh, these kind of drastic measures like, uh, like LSD and so on and so forth would, uh, would do the trick. And so they investigated it. And of course, they didn't want to, the Americans didn't want to use their own population because of the political repercussions. And here was Ewan Cameron, who was very happy to use Canadian citizens when the CIA were very happy to do that. Some of the most prominent psychiatrists, um, psychologists, people who were involved in, in neurological studies, um, and including some of the presidents of the American Psychiatric Association, the Canadian Psychiatric Association, were involved in conducting these experiments on children. They used, they used um, electricity, implants, um, a lot of experimental drugs were used, sensory deprivation was used. And then there was a whole pile of stuff that was done in Winnipeg also in the 70s, uh, uh, where people were put in uh, tanks. They put in wetsuits and put in tanks and everything was closed down and so on. But uh, basically the, 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 the kind of thing that they were looking for was, uh, was, was how brain function changes and how we process uh, information 
you know, in these very extreme conditions. Mm -hmm. A simple form of torture that they used on, on myself and on a lot of other children was um, the dislocation of your limbs. So they dislocated both your arms and your legs. And um, that was probably the simplest, easiest, and cheapest way uh, to reinforce the notion that you were absolutely helpless and that you could do nothing physically to defend or protect yourself from what they were going to do to you. Because your mind would say, I have to lift up my arm, I want to hit or I want to strike. Or your mind would say to your legs, get up and run, get up and run, we need to run. And all you would be, there would just be your torso and your hand. But are people manipulable? Yes. Can you get people to do things they might not otherwise want to do? Yes. Being strapped down being strapped down on a table, having electricity applied like to your vagina or to that area, having electricity applied to your spine. If you want to sort of go one stage back and say, can you control behavior? The answer is yes, you can. There was pedophilia involved, pedophilia involved as well. I think a lot of a lot of research people were blackmailed into taking part in experiments or into taking part in the cover-up um, because the children were, were used, um, we were used for pornography and pedophilia. And a really common, a really common occurrence was a, um, a scientist or a researcher who they, they needed to be involved or they needed to be complicit with them he would find himself attending something. They would then drug him, and he would find himself in bed with a child with a camera just like this one, documenting what was going, what was going on. So that we were used as children that way complicitly. I'd say, is that mind control? The answer is yes, sir, but there are ways in which behavior can be changed.